Hey class, Absolute 5 here. Today we're going to talk about fractions. Yes, I know, the dreaded fractions that everyone is cringy about all the time. So let's actually get right into it. Let's understand the basic of what a fraction actually is. So, let's see. Fraction. Or fraction, depending on how you want to look at it. Let's just take 5 over 6. We understand the top number represents the numerator. And the bottom number represents the denominator. So it is important to understand that always remember that a fraction represents something that is not whole. Whole meaning, think of something that's not complete or something that is complete, that's what it means to be whole. Like, like a whole pie or like a whole, a whole sheet or I don't know, something that's whole, that you can think of that's whole, that is, you know, you have a complete circle, it's whole. Now, always remember that a fraction is always a piece missing. Fraction represents that part missing. It's not complete. I guess maybe that's why in some people they might not like seeing things not complete because it's not perfect. It's not whole. It doesn't look nice. But that's a whole topic of another story. But anyway, what? let's understand what makes a fraction a fraction or in this case a proper and improper fraction. A proper fraction is a fraction whose numerator is less than its denominator generally to remember proper fractions are less than one. So no matter what, always remember, this is very important, proper fractions are always or are less than one no matter what. So for example, two over three is less than one, no matter, no matter what you do. Because let's think about it this way. If I made this, 3 over 3, that will be one whole. It will be 1. That's why 3 over 3, when the number is exactly the same, it's going to be 1. Versus when, when it's less than, when the numerator is less than the denominator, it's going to be a proper fraction. Proper fractions are important because they help indicate that a fraction is completely reduced, that it's, it's finished. You can't do anything further from it. That's why it's important to know to identify when a fraction is proper, meaning it's done, you can't do anymore, that's it, you stop. Now, what happens if it's the opposite? What happens if the denominator is smaller and the numerator is bigger? Well, let's understand what is that first. If you guys haven't figured it out, it actually means that a if we know proper fractions where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then, in, then that means in that means the opposite is an improper fraction. So what is an improper fraction? An improper fraction is a fraction whose numerator, whoopsie, numerator. <laughs> Numerator oops, is greater greater than or equal to its denominator. So in short, improper fractions are greater 
greater than or equal to 1. So let's take 9 over 4. 9 over 4 is improper. It's an improper fraction. So we can clearly see the difference between a proper fraction and an improper fraction. You can clearly see the numerator is much bigger than the denominator. So think of it like um, think of it like this: an improper fraction. Let's take that for example. Let's say we had. Let's use this. There's, let's see, there's four pieces, and then another four, and then we have an extra one, one piece, like a triangle. There you go. So this is what this looks like. It's, in total, there's nine pieces, but it's in increments of four. That's why, when you look at that, this is improper. You see how that this is improper in the sense how it's not fully complete and you have one sticking out. That's why it looks improper. It doesn't look niceness. It doesn't look whole. That's the whole concept of trying to remember the difference between a proper fraction and an improper fraction. Okay? So that's the lesson for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Be sure to smash that bell button for more content. And I'll see you guys next time with another video. Hopefully the whole net neutrality thing resolves itself. But besides that, um, I'll see you guys next time with another video. Take care. This has been Absolute 5. I'm Roger Palomino. Math is infinite because there are infinitely many possibilities. And remember, don't hate, calculate.